A very good day to all of you guys. Good morning, good afternoon, um, and whatever moment you're watching this. Today, we're going to look at the dino. And especially in the background, we have one goal of this lesson, and that is describe the social, political, and economic practices of the indigenous people of the Caribbean up to 49. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to look at those things. I want to put on the laser. Wow, this is cool, no? So we're going to look at the Taino over here. See that? And the goal is to describe the political and economical practices of the indigenous people up to 1492. Why 1492? Because that was the year that Columbus came and after him, a lot of Spaniards, Portuguese, and other Europeans. Europeans. And this is about chapter one, the Caribbean history for CSEC. When we look at the Taino, they have different types of development. Desarrollo, think papimento. What, am I, what do I mean by this? In the whole of the Caribbean, over here, yeah, you cannot say that it was like one development uh, of the Taino. Each island and each group, subgroup, you could say a subgroup of Taino, had a different kind of development. The main patterns, patterns, remember that word, they are the same. But you cannot say there was like one Taino group with one kind of development. There are differences in development. They occupied many parts of the Caribbean. They came to the Caribbean around 1200 AD, so 800 years ago, until the coming of Columbus. And almost 100 years after Columbus came and after, after him, the... Portuguese and the Spaniards and other Europeans like the Dutch and the English. Within a hundred years that Columbus came, most of the Taino were wiped out because of, for instance, the diseases that the Spanish brought with them, but also because the Spanish destroyed their staple crops, their basic food. They are different from Arawaks. So you cannot just say, from, oh, the Arawaks, they are the same as the Taino. Often they are talked about together in literature and in videos, but they are different. They have similarities that are much or less the same. Both worshipped ancestor spirits. That are ancestors still with you and you have to reckon with them. You have to um, make, them, uh, make them in a good mood or make them work for you or live together with them. And they made cassava bread. And I googled it and... Um, Traditionally, it can look like this, but you can make also normal bread out of it. And But you could say the Arawaks had a bit of a simpler culture than the Taino. For instance, the agriculture, uh, the Taino used slash and burn agriculture, and the, the Arawaks, sorry, the Arawaks used a slash and burn agriculture, by burning the field and then using it as for agriculture. And the Taino used more of a, a drainage system with water and making dikes and digging small canals to do their agriculture. That's the main difference. Their diet, what did they eat? We already said they eat cassava a lot, but diet means actually, what do you eat? What is your diet? As a staple crop, and staple crop means their basic food, which they made other stuff out of it, like bread or potato chips or uh, powder to make bread out of it, like I said, was cassava. And this is like a root, a wortel, the thing Hollandaise, and you can make all kinds of stuff out of it, and it was their basic food. They also gathered wild plants. So they knew a lot about na nature. They also grew corn, uh, sorry, maize. And they ate a variety of reptiles, other small animals and insects. Yeah. And a special thing is that the women were mainly, no, that is not important now. So variety of reptiles, other small animals and insects. Yeah. And they grew maize. They gathered wild plants and the staple crop was cassava, what looks like this. 
The settlements roughly look like this. And we will look at the difference between this house and this house because it shows a lot about their culture. The settlements could be one family of a few people, parents, grandparents, so like a few dozens. Large rectangular buildings, there live the chiefs. So this is a large rectangular uh, the building, construction, like this. There the, chief, the chiefs lived, so the chiefs of their tribe, sometimes small, sometimes bigger. And in the small circular hut, circular, yeah, the common people. So you could see already archaeologists, when they do diggings, they see not everybody was equal. equal. That there was inequality in their society. So, in a difficult word, their society was not egalitarian, egalitarian, igual. Not everybody was equal, and they had classes. Classes means they have subgroups that are not equal to each other. For instance, they had priests, they had chiefs, they had common people, yeah? they had nobility, and they have a hierarchy. So some group has the most less power and one person, the chief, has the most power. So we have not an egalitarian society. We have it parted in groups. And on special occasions, the men and the women would paint themselves in all kinds of colors. But important is they didn't walk around every day like this. It had a purpose. Very important concept, egalitarian. It means a society in which everybody has a certain kind of equality. Well, the society of the Taino was not egalitarian. The chief, the chief, like I said, lived in this building. This building here. He organized hunting and farming. So it was important to organize stuff in society. He negotiated relationships, for instance, with Taino on other islands for div uh, different specialities and different capabilities. And he negotiated contact with them, for instance, by, um, by exchanging gifts. He had absolute power. I looked in my dictionary and the best word in Papimento probably is for that, poder absoluto. It means the chief could make decisions by his own and he didn't have to listen to the nobility or to the common people. He had a lot of power in his own hands. And he typically had one more than one wife. And typically means in this case, did every chief have uh, uh, did every chief have multiple wives? No, but often he did. The Tainos and Columbus, the Taino and Columbus. Well, we know the Taino lived in all kinds of islands in the Caribbean and in the Bahamas, where Columbus first arrived. There were also Taino, and for instance, also on Cuba. Yeah, but they were spread out in the Caribbean, sometimes living with the Carignago, by the way, on one island. And when Columbus came, this had a great influence on the Taino, of course. I told you guys already that they died out within a hundred years. And from the records of Columbus and his crew and the Spanish that came after him, they know the Taino had clubs, bows and arrows. And Columbus thought this was only for hunting, but when needed, they would have fed war, uh, fed a, held a war with Columbus and the Spanish or the Calinago or even other people. Some groups of that email were very peaceful, others were not. So you could not say this were the Taino. There were internal differences in development in their skills, things like that. But in the end, they were traders rather than warriors. So they traded a lot and they were not, by nature not a fighting people. And what they brought to the Spanish and what they learned the Spanish was 
tobacco cultivation. They chewed on the tobacco or perhaps made kind of pipes of it because it uh, helped very well against hunger and it was a nice way to pass time. So they cultivated tobacco. The Spanish learned from them. This, this way of cultivating uh, the plant that we now call the tobacco. And also they did cotton cultivation. And this is also something that had a big influence on the Spanish and the Portuguese and the Dutch and the English. And even in our world, because most of my clothing is still made out of cotton. Yeah? And they were skilled canoe makers, so they could trade with the other Taino and they could also trade with the Kalinago if they had a peaceful relationship. Yeah? So they also made canoes. This was my video about the Taino, especially about the social, political and economic practices of the indigenous people up to 1492. And it was our chapter uh, one, Caribbean history for CSEC. If you want to ask me some questions, you can ask me below during class. Please don't forget to subscribe if you didn't do it already. Um, you can also ask me questions within the framework of classroom. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video. I try to make them better every time. So I'm really open to suggestions and tips. Have a nice day and have a nice week.